Hi, I'm Bob Bostock, and I'm here at the Richard Nixon Presidential Library and Museum in beautiful Yorba Linda, California. There's no better place in the country, and really in the world, to learn about the life and times of America's 37th President, Richard Nixon, than here at the Nixon Library, and on the web at nixonfoundation.org or nixonlibrary.gov. Of course, to fully appreciate President Nixon's years in the arena, it's important to know about the enormous contributions that his wife, Patricia Ryan Nixon, made to the success of what was known from his earliest days in public life as the Pat and Dick team. Pat Nixon was born on March 16, 1912 in Ely, Nevada. Her father was a miner in Nevada, and she with her mother and two older brothers and her dad lived in a miner's shack not far from the mine. She was born late in the evening on St. Patrick's Day Eve, March 16th, and when her dad got back from the mine early in the morning on St. Patrick's Day, he declared that she was his St. Patrick's babe in the morn. And from then on, she became aware of her Irish heritage and was very proud of that Irish heritage. Her father, whose parents had immigrated to the United States from Ireland in the 19th century, was also a very proud Irishman. And throughout her life, Mrs. Nixon would celebrate her birthday on March 17th in honor of both her Irish heritage and in honor of her father. After her father died, she became known as Pat because she thought that that would honor his affection and pride in their Irish heritage. Pat Nixon grew up in very limited circumstances. Her family moved from Nevada to Southern California when she was very young. They had a small farm and it wasn't a particularly prosperous farm and everyone in the family had to pitch in to help make ends meet. When she was 13, Pat's mother died and she became the woman of the house, responsible for the cleaning and the cooking, taking care of her dad and her two older brothers. Every morning before school, she would get up before the sun, iron her clothes to get ready for school, prepare breakfast for the family, and while she was doing all that, also doing some studying and making sure she was ready for the school day. And when she would go home after school, it was the same thing all over again. More cleaning, more cooking, doing farm chores, and studying for school. When she was 18, her father died, and she and her two older brothers were left alone at that point. She very much wanted to go to college, but she and her brothers decided that they would help put each other through school one after the other. Her two older brothers went to college. Pat Nixon went east to New York City. She had quite an adventure doing that. A couple whose main home was in Connecticut but were spending uh, several months in Southern California were looking for someone to drive them and their car back across the country. Pat applied for the job and got it. And even though she was very young and there were no interstate highways at the time, the trip was quite an adventure. She learned how to navigate narrow and muddy roads, how to change tires, how to keep that car running for the entire 3,000 mile journey to the East Coast. And while she was there, she decided to stay for a while. She trained as an x-ray technician and saved money so that when her brothers were done with college, she would be able to return to California and go to college herself, which indeed she did. She was a student at the University of Southern California where she graduated with honors in 1937 with the equivalent of a master's degree. And after earning her degree at USC, she became a teacher at the Whittier Union High School. As a young teacher, very attractive young woman, she was quite a popular figure. Her students all loved her, the boys seemed to have crushes on her, and the girls all wanted to be just like Miss Ryan. Well, one of the things they required of young teachers at the time was that they get involved in the community. So one of the things that she did was try out for a play called The Dark Tower that the local theater group was putting on. Well, at that time, she met a young lawyer who lived in Whittier, who had just returned to California from law school out on the East Coast at Duke University. So this young lawyer's name was Richard Nixon. He was immediately smitten by the beautiful Pat Ryan and asked her out. And as we say, the rest of the story is history. So I hope you'll watch again as we tell more of the stories in the background about the amazing Pat Ryan Nixon, America's First Lady, the wife of the 37th President of the United States, and someone who's left a lasting impact on our country.